You know, it seems like Japan has always been known for its contributions to video gaming. It dominated the market for decades and even helped resurrect it with the Famicom turned NES after the dreaded video game crash of 1983. Ooh, I'm old. Ooh. See, the Japanese are practical, inventive, and they know how to utilize technology. And aside from gaming, you can really see this in Japan's transportation system. Now, just wait, watch where I'm going here. They've got high-speed rail trains, waterway transport, and even well-maintained roads. But Japan is a crowded nation. Cars are not always going to be efficient or practical. That's where biking comes in. Hmm? Not high-end custom hybrids or fancy mountain bikes. No, the preferred bike of Japan is the Mamachari. Slang for mom's bike. These city bikes come complete with sturdy kickstands, bells, lights, and of course, that sexy basket. Mm. For millions of people living in Japan, the bicycle is the preferred method of travel. So logically, let's take biking and combine it with video games. It's time for Cycle Race Roadman. <laughs> Unfortunately, we won't be riding the Mamachari. This is a competitive sport. Or alternative sport. But well, really, it's just a, it's a video game. In Cycle Race Roadman, you'll be competing in a road cycling stage race across Japan. This 4,000 kilometer bike race will take you through 18 stages. So pull up your tight and sassy bicycle shorts. We've got a marathon to win. A real quick warning, this game was developed by Advanced Communication Company and released in 1988 by Tokyo Shoseki. Advanced Communication Company made some interesting titles, like this, a futuristic golf game where a robot is denied playing golf with humans and it touches on human-robot race relations. That's, that's deep. But more notably, they developed Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde for the NES. For those of you in the know, that's not a good sign. But don't worry, let's be optimistic. Right. First, we've got to choose our team. You can choose from the USA, France, Japan, and Italy. Oh, <laughs> some of these character sprites are amazing. <laughs> just look at them, just, just look at them. <laughs> <laughs> As this is Fami Corner, I'll be representing Japan. The cyclists each have their own individual stats, which include speed, spirit, stamina, and tech. To complement your rider, you're going to need something to... Well, to ride. Initially, you're given a fairly average bike, but as you complete races, you'll earn points to spend on better bicycles. Each bike has stats as well for gear, brake, durability, and weight. Before the race even begins, you'll be shown an overview of the stage length and elevations. During the top-down view races, you need to adjust your play style to make it to each finish line. Control is, uh, a little painful. To accelerate, you don't just hold down the A button. No, no, no. This game is a test of athleticism and endurance. Even though it's just a video game. You have to manually pedal by tapping the A button furiously to increase your speed. Why not just use a turbo controller, Game Dave? You gotta turbo it! Turbo it! Well, person that's not real, if you take the easy route, you'll be sorely disappointed because you are missing the whole point of marathon bicycle racing. Cyclists don't pedal the whole time. They have to drift and glide strategically through sections of the race. If you go all TURBO on this game, <laughs> you're gonna run out of steam, stamina, power. That's why that power meter is down there, friends. If you deplete your power bar with too much pedaling, you lose automatically. There's no time for recovery. You just get retired. No pension, no 401k, nothing. So pedal smart. You can also brake with the B button, which I never had to do while playing. So, 
Steering is pretty unique. You have two choices. You can tap the D-pad left or right to angle your bike for sharp turning, or you can hold a direction to ease your bike from side to side. This is great for passing by opponents without veering off the road and dying over the rail, which he clearly would have here. So yeah, it took time to get used to the steering, but it really works for this type of game. Graphically, the game seems simplistic, but as you progress through the stages, you get a wide variety of environments to race in. The difficulty of each leg of the marathon varies as well. Some tracks will have you climbing hills and conserving energy, others will be speedy straight shots to the finish. And as you near the end of the 4,000 kilometers, the roadways will start to narrow and be riddled with obstacles. The challenge comes from navigating the tracks quickly, avoiding collisions with other cyclists, and maintaining that power that we talked about earlier. Oh, and your bike will take damage over time and may force you to swap it out for a new one mid-race. This can waste valuable seconds of your overall finishing time, knocking your rank into oblivion. Now, maybe I haven't made it quite clear. This is not an easy game. It's lengthy, the computer opponents are skilled, and you need to take advantage of any help available on the road. This comes in the form of your teammates. Yes, overall, you want to be the number one road man, but there will be others representing your country on the tracks. You can ride beside them to conserve some energy and protect yourself from crashes. Some of your teammates will even have pick-me-ups for you signified by an S for extra speed, P to regain some power, and R to repair your bike damage. Heads up though, if that teammate crashes, you will not be able to collect that power-up. So don't be wasting those power-ups, don't be a failure. Don't fail. If you do fail out of a race, you can continue, and there's a super long password system to save your progress and points, which is nice. But here's something to keep in mind. Every second counts, and if you have a poor start on the first few stages, you're going to have a hard time catching up to the other cyclists' times. I made this mistake, and I was stuck in second place up until the last stage of the marathon. <laughs> Stupid Eddie from America. Stupid. If you don't earn first place overall by the end of the game, you lose. No one cares about second place. It's number one or number nothing. You're going to have to get your life together, go back to school, become a pharmacist or a bus driver. Your career's over. Luckily, thanks to continues and those passwords, I was able to shave off just enough time to beat Eddie. By three seconds. The ending is actually pretty good and makes you feel accomplished. It's not just some lame game over screen that says, thanks for getting on that bike, you did it. You get a full on set of cutscenes. You get congratulated, you become the champion roadman of Japan, you get the ladies, a trophy, and the coveted yellow jersey of glory. <laughs> that, that is, that is amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you put that jersey on. You put it on. Oh, I really like this game. Sure, it's just cycling, but I never got bored. The stress of maneuvering through the tracks and avoiding the other racers was exciting all the way up until the end. You can even play two-player mode and take turns competing for the best times. Cycle Race Roadman has me pumped about bicycles. Maybe I could trade in my yellow jersey of glory for my very own Mamachari. Yeah, I would ride that thing. I would ride it hard. <laughs>